Just finished your junior year in high school, uh, 2002. Kobe and Shaq both go for 30 plus against the Nets. Game three, the finals. Uh, you, of course, were then drafted the next year. You and AD is the first time Lakers team, uh, Lakers teammates have done that since then. Just wondered if you were like your thoughts on the Kobe Shaq dynamic and kind of what it's like go, going through a game like today with AD, um, is especially at a similar level of, of efficiency. Um, you know, obviously being in high school and watching the Kobe Shaq. Um, um, duo it was the most dominant duo that I have personally seen in my life from a basketball perspective. Um, hadn't seen, a, a, obviously, you, we knew the force that uh, Shaq brought to the table, but the elegance and force that Kobe played with as well, um, they were very dominant in what they did on the floor, on both sides of the floor. Um, so to be in a, a conversation with those two guys, myself and Anthony, um, or myself and AD, he would, he's going to kill me. Um, myself and AD, um, it's just very humbling because, uh, I mean, I know I grew up watching those guys. I grew up admiring Kobe, obviously, for, you know, kid coming straight out of high school. So, you know, admired that got a kid that was young and got the opportunity and, and obviously the force that Shaq played with. So I'm um, just, just very humbling. And, we're happy that we're in, um, we can be even mentioned with those greats. Um, LeBron, the, uh, both AD and Frank kind of indicated that they, even though it's a win, they weren't totally happy with how things went today. Um, defensively, especially, Frank had mentioned. Do you agree with that? And what concern, if so, what concerns you about? No, I definitely agree. And... Uh, Myself, Coach, and AD was not happy um, with our defensive presence tonight. Um, we know we can be a lot better, and we're just uh, uh, from you know myself and AD. We're not we're not satisfied, and uh, with you know just a win, we want to be great. We want to be great. Um, as, you know, as close to 48 minutes as possible. Um, and I know I said it after game one, but I'm extremely excited to watch the film tomorrow as well as a group and see ways we can be better. Um, we're playing against a very dangerous team in Miami where you know, they have five guys on the floor that's a, a threat, um, as they've shown tonight. And, um, so we have to continue to stay on, um, stay on our P's and Q's and, and cross our T's and dot our I's throughout the course of the game. And just, you know, if we have a breakdown, being able to cover for one another, but they do a great job of putting your defense um, in positions that you may not be accustomed to. So. Um, we definitely was not happy with our with our performance defensively tonight, um, and we hopefully we can be uh, well. We know not hopefully we know we'll be better in Game Three. Allison, LeBron, if you indulge me on the, the Kobe Shaq line of questioning, obviously Shaq, big post presence, a five as much as a five can be, Kobe perimeter and all that. You and AD seem to have elements, maybe a, a bit of both of their games. I, I don't know if you would agree with that, but it, if you do, could you describe how maybe both of you are a bit of a hybrid of what those guys brought to the court? Um, well, I guess if you look at the sense of um, the size and the power and the speed that Shaq and his, and his size play with, um, you could look at my game throughout the course of my career and say that, and then you look at the elegance and the ability to shoot the ball and the ability to play in the paint as well, post up, get into the perimeter. Um, I guess you can say that you can have uh, some of AD's game that can compare to Kobe's game in that sense. Um, obviously, we're, we're all four of us, we're t all different positions. You know, Kobe was a natural two guard. I'm kind of a, I don't know, whatever position, Shaq is a center and AD is kind of a hybrid as well. So, um, <clears throat> but. I guess all four of us, we have a, a winning mentality and we just try to make enough plays out on the floor throughout the course of the game that just that would benefit not only ourselves individually, but from for the most important thing for the better of the team. And um, I can't even believe that we, you know, up here talking about myself and AD with Kobe and Shaq. I mean, it's just it's an incredible thing. Um, in the third quarter, you guys had an 18-point lead, um, and pretty close to that point, the Heat had a timeout, and UD was talking to the guys and really fired up. 
And at that point, it seemed like there was maybe a turn in momentum and they started attacking aggressively. What do you know about UD that makes him impactful to a bench of players like that, even though he himself is not playing in the game? Um, just check his resume. It's that simple. I mean, he's put in the work. He's been there. He's been through everything that the Heat franchise have seen. He's seen it all. He's done it all. I mean, just check his resume. So, and he's, um, it's not many uh, guys that talk about it and also be about it. He's one of them. And um, if you want to be in a foxhole, that's somebody you want to be in a foxhole with. Dan? LeBron, you used the word force probably six or seven times in the, the first two answers today. How important has your team's ability to play with force made a difference in these first two games? Well, I think I was talking about force because Shaq's name came up and there's no way that you can um, talk about Shaq and not that, that word come up. From a team's perspective, um, I think we've done a good job of, one, not turning the ball over, but also still being able to play with force, as you would say, play with tempo offensively, get good looks, get looks that we like, uh, make or miss, and live with the results. Now, we have to play with that type of force defensively, but also from a cerebral side as well, from, um, you know, thinking the game a little bit better as they're going through their um, their offense and, and, and their pace and their force as well. Um, so um, we got to be a lot better, obviously, on that side. All right, I'll take a couple more. Uh, Andy Kamenetsky. Hey, LeBron. Um, when you guys advanced past Denver, Frank was talking about relationship he has with you and he said that the buy-in that you had with him as a coach and the immediacy of that buy-in did a lot for this team and where you are right now what what was it about frank that gave you that immediate buy-in and that you gravitated towards quickly um for one from from a competitive standpoint um going against frank's teams in indiana when we had our battles when i was in miami you understood how well um, those teams were um, coached, and uh, and it starts, you know, with the head coach and the players are an extension of the head coach. Um, so I had that 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 memory of that, just battling those Indiana Pacer teams. Um, and for me, I've always been a coachable player throughout my whole life. Um, I've played for multiple coaches, and um, I've always been a. Um, a coachable player so um, you know the respect more importantly he's the head coach and the head coach should have the respect from all his players um, no matter who you are <clears throat> if you're really serious about trying to make an impact or, or really or really trying to do something special so I mean I, it was just that simple for me personally um, Allison back to you Appreciate it. We were going to go to break, but. Sit on side if that works. Okay, then we will start off with Dave Metterman. Brian, you guys went on, um, I think, a 75 to 30 run after falling down 13 early. What allows uh, you guys to have success like that over a sustained period of time, uh, a run like that? Pay attention to detail. Um, I don't I'm physical enough, um, and you actually you you have to get a feel for how hard Miami plays. Um, and I think um, you know they smacked us in the mouth, and we got a sense of that. And so we knew how hard we had to play if we wanted to try to make it a game. And um, you know from that moment when it was 23-10, we started to play um, to our capabilities. We started flying around. We started getting defensive stops in. Started sharing the ball a, bit, uh, a lot better offensively and just got into a really good groove. All right, Kyle Dillon. Um, for AD, thank you. For AD, obviously his first finals game, what did you see about, about his preparation? Was there any advice you gave him? And, and to see him perform like that, um, what, 
What do you feel about that? Um, I don't feel anything. I expect it out of him. Um, didn't need to give him no advice. Uh, we've been preparing for this moment all season. He's been preparing for this moment all season. And I'm happy to be on the same floor with him in the same uniform. And uh, um, he was, a, once again, a, a force um, every facet of the game, both offensively and defensively. Dan? LeBron, you've, you've felt the buzz of the NBA Finals nine times in your career. What was it like today with nobody there, the sound? I mean, I know you're used to bubble basketball at this point, but on this stage, what did it feel like to play a Finals game? It felt great. It felt great. I've been preparing for this moment for quite a while. Um, and fans, no fans.